In this Photoshop tutorial, we are gonna take this image and turn it into this image using a couple of brushing and masking techniques, but really the main point beyond uh, behind this tutorial is to teach you the difference between flow and opacity. These are two different brush settings that can actually both be very useful, not only in Photoshop, but also if you use Lightroom or Camera Raw as well. All right, let's go ahead and dive in. Okay, so now we are inside of Photoshop. Just to give you a quick lay the land of the document that I have set up that's going to be our demonstration for this is I just have a, a photo of a bird and on top of that I have overlaid a texture layer. Okay, and I'll talk a little bit about those texture layers in a few minutes, but for now let's get to the tutorial and talk about opacity versus flow. Uh, what I'm going to do is give you a very simple example here. We're just going to draw on white for a moment. And what I have is I have my brush tool. I just have a soft round brush selected foreground colors black. And if I paint at 100% opacity, of course, that's what we're gonna get. Now, if I bring my opacity down here to about 25, 30%, somewhere around there, watch what happens. And whether you're using a pen or tablet, a mouse, a trackpad, whatever, when you click, you brush. Now, you have to continue to click to paint, right? If you let up, and then just start moving your cursor around, which I've let up, I'm not clicking anymore, um, nothing's happening, right? So when you click, it paints and you have to continue to click to paint. But look at what happens, no, no matter how much I scribble over an area, nothing gets darker, it's just 20 some percent, whatever my opacity is of that color. Now, if I start to interact with an area I painted before, now it'll build up a little bit. And if I release my mouse button or my trackpad or whatever, and then I click again and start to paint, then it'll start to build up more and more. I release, click again, build up, release, click again, build up. So that's opacity. Let's go ahead and get that back to white. Now I'm gonna bring opacity up to 100% and I'm gonna bring my flow down to about 10%, okay? Now I'm gonna click and I want you to watch what happens. I'm gonna click and start brushing. I'm brushing, brushing, brushing. But as I start to scribble or go over an area I went over before, see how it starts to build up, all right? You get a much more natural way of brushing by doing this, okay? It's easier, it's more natural, it allows you to fine tune as you're going along a little bit more. And to me, it's, a, it's actually a little bit more predictable to go this route. So that's the difference between opacity and flow. It's very, very simple. Some people use them together. You can, there's no rule. Once you get into this stuff, it's very, very creative. Um, there, there is no rule to it. You can feel free to use the tool together. It will, it will become more natural in a way, but also less predictable as you start mixing the two of them. So I, I typically don't, but again, not like it's a rule or anything. So as we build up and we scribble in one area, we build up flow we build up the, the color that we're working with. So let's take this to our image that we're working with. I'm gonna do a very quick, simple texture blend on this one. Um, what I'm gonna do is hide the top layer, click on the bird layer here. I will go to select subject. Uh, select subject got a big improvement in June of 2020, so it actually does a really good job. I will however go to my quick selection tool. It is in add mode, so as I use this, remember it's just a brush. Right and left bracket keys will make it bigger or smaller. There's a size setting up here. Um, I'll go and just brush along the branch to include that. And then any other little areas that I want to include. And then any areas that I want to exclude as well. All right, so uh, like this up here, I caught this little branch. So I'll hold down Option or Alt, which puts me into Subtract mode, and I can just paint that away. And that's just keyboard shortcuts to the, the little icons that are up here in the top, but I leave it on plus mode. Okay, so now we've got a, a base selection. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go click on the texture layer, turn it on so we can see it, and then just add a layer mask to it. So we go layer, we come down here to layer mask, and what I wanna do is I wanna hide the selected area on the texture so that it reveals the bird below. Okay, pretty simple. Alrighty, from here, now we get into the blending part of this. We get into what's gonna help pull this off and make it look more realistic. Because right now, it just looks like it's pasted on top of something. So if you're blending, uh, this is where these tools come in a, a lot more, a lot uh, handy, 
is when you're trying to blend something so you don't want it to look pasted on like that. So we go to our layer mask, I'll hit Command or Control Plus to zoom in. I'm gonna press B for my brush tool and I'm gonna bring that flow down to about 10%, okay? And by the way, here, let's keep opacity. If I do opacity, the problem with opacity, it's gonna be really hard to just go in here and blend. And you paint with white and black on this layer mask. Um, I have to paint with white to hide this, this portion of it to bring the texture back. Uh, black will, will do the opposite. I always tell people, if you're ever not sure, try one. If it doesn't work, try the other. You got a 50-50 shot of getting it right the first time, and you will always get it right the second time. So opacity makes it hard to blend. Okay, it's gonna, it's gonna almost soften it too much. And we really gotta get rid of these bright edges and, and things along there. So that's where I put opacity up to 100%. And I bring my flow down. And now I can very, I can very much in a controlled way go in here and paint on these edges and scribble more in places that need it and don't scribble. Like over here doesn't need quite as much, so I wouldn't do as much. Right over here needs a little bit more, so I'll scribble a little bit more. Okay, down here, you know, bigger brush. Let that feather of that brush work for you. All right, this is a very soft edge brush. You can control all that using your brush settings up at the top here. Okay, so I'll just go through and start working on that edge. And again, wherever I see a bright halo, I would probably paint a little bit more, scribble a little bit more. So the scribble is the best word that I can think of uh, so that it goes away. Okay, and you'll see it just fades away nicely. Again, the bigger the brush you use, you can use the edge. You'll see I'm never putting the brush in the middle there. I'm only using the edge of that faded soft edge brush, which is gonna help it look more natural. Speaking of natural, I can think of not a more natural way to transition to a word from our sponsor. Um, I have a uh, course called Creative Texture Blending. Uh, you can find it over at mattk.com slash wildlife. Many of you watching this video um, have, have actually already purchased this course because it's, it's probably one of my most popular ones and um, people just absolutely love it. Uh, if you haven't purchased it, you can swing by the website. This just the course dives more into texture blending, more into the techniques on how to make it look real. It comes with textures, it comes with brushes. Lots of fun stuff can be had there. And if you have purchased the course, uh, the probably the biggest request I'm getting is for more training and more textures. So I actually have three texture packs coming out um, in a little while here. So depending on when you watch this, they will be out on October 15th. So uh, you can swing by mattk.com to find a little bit more about those. But not only are there going to be three texture packs, but there will be some add-on bonus tutorials, uh, over 90 minutes of them on new texture blending techniques uh, that will go along with it. Okay, back to our tutorial. Now, over here, I... I feel like I would have to brush a little bit too much with flow to try to blend that in. So what I would try is bring my flow up. I'd bring my opacity down just a little bit, but again, just use that edge of that brush. And now I'm using a little bit more brute force strength to get rid of that edge. Cause I think it works there. Okay. Sometimes I'll even start it with a little bit of painting with opacity and just going through. Okay, then I'll switch back over and I'll reduce the flow like I did before. And now I'll just go through here and paint away on some of those edges. So it doesn't have to be one or the other. It can be a mixture between the two. And sometimes that's really the best way to go about it. But when it comes to some of these other areas, I'll zoom out a little bit. Another thing that I do is I use a big brush, hit the right bracket key, bring that flow up a little bit more and I'll just let the edge of the brush do the work for me, All right? And with opacity, this would fade away a little bit faster and also be harder to control, okay? So I'll just go through here, work around the edges, any place I see a hard edge, I'll scribble a little bit more and then What I'll do a lot of times as well is overpaint, reverse my color. So now I'm going to paint with black and then paint some of it back in. 
Okay, if I ever feel that transition got a little bit too strong, because you don't want it to just disappear. Again, blending is the name of the game here. So then I'll just paint a little bit of it back in. And that'll that's going to be your process. Back and forth between the two. And you can see there we can get a nice little blend. So if I hide that texture layer, we've essentially just blended it in with our subject here uh, to give it a, a, nice, a nice type of a feeling with the photo to almost infuse texture into the photo and give it a real nice look. By the way, guys, if you're using Lightroom, Lightroom's adjustment brush has a flow setting too. So you can use that here um, and it worked very, very similar. I also have a video where I talk about the difference between flow and density. So I'll make sure I pop that into, into here as well. But in the meantime, there's a, there you have the, the difference between the two. Um, why for certain things I prefer flow and when opacity can be useful. And again, as you, you found here, I think sometimes it's going to be a mixture between the two of them to get the job done.